Lesson 4 of Porphyry's Isagogi, covering chapters 5 through 10. The key ideas for this lesson, we're talking about the five predicables. Now we have discussed some of the major ones in detail, but now we're going to discuss the relationship of the predicables all to one another. So just to recap, to predicate something of something else is to make a statement about it. Every proposition has a subject and a predicate, which is typically linked by an is affirmation or is not negation. So there are five kinds of these predicates. These are the five predicables according to how they relate to the subject of the proposition. Predicates name one of the following five aspects of the subject. The first predicable is genus, the genus of the subject of the proposition, as in Socrates is an animal, the species of the subject, as in Socrates is a man, the subject's specific difference, Socrates is rational. So this is the kind of difference that distinguishes the species. So he's in the species man because the defining characteristic of that species, one of them, is to be rational. So that is a specific difference. An essential trait or property, proprium in Latin, of the subject, as in Socrates is risible, or in other words, he's able to laugh. And finally, the fifth predicable is an unessential trait or accident of the subject, as in Socrates is white. Chapter 5. Property they divide in four ways, for it is that which happens to some one species alone, though not to every individual of that species, as to a man to heal or to geometrize. All right, so the first division of property is this only happens to one species, but it doesn't happen to every individual in that species. That's one type of property. So for humans, we have the property of doing geometry, although not all humans do geometry. That's the first kind. That also which happens to a whole species, though not to that alone, as to man to be a biped. So the second division is that happens to every individual in the species, but not only to individuals in that species. So in this case, the entire species of man is bipedal, walks on two feet, but man is not the only species which does so. That again, which happens to a species alone and to every individual of it, and at a certain time, as to every man to become gray in old age. All right, so the third kind is this species only and every individual in that species. In the fourth place, it is that in which it concurs to happen to one species alone and to every individual of it, and always, as risibility to a man. For though he does not always laugh, yet he is said to be risible, not from his always laughing, but from being naturally adapted to laugh. And this is always inherent in him, in the same way as neighing in a horse. They say also that these are validly properties because they reciprocate, since if anything be a horse, it is capable of neighing, and if anything be capable of neighing, it is a horse. So unlike going gray in the third type of property, which only happens at a certain time, this is the type of property that is true of this species alone to every individual of this species, and it's always true of them, as in the ability to laugh. And you might make the objection that, well, what if somebody has damaged vocal cords and they're not able to laugh or something like that? And you must understand that when we're talking about logic, we're talking about categories and classifying things carefully and accurately. We're not talking about outlying cases. Something like that, if a member of the species was not able to laugh for some, for some reason, that would be because of some kind of defect or damage. It would be not a lack of participation in that species. It wouldn't be that their nature is not adapted to it. It would be that there's some kind of problem with their nature or some type of damage to their nature that doesn't allow it to function normally. So you can say absolutely that all humans are bipedal. They walk on two feet. There are obviously humans whose feet do not work or humans who have had their feet amputated. And that doesn't mean that they're not humans. It means that the species itself is 
a species that walks on two feet and individuals of that species walk on two feet. And if that person's nature had not been damaged in some way, they, they too would. Chapter 6 of Accident Accident is that which is present and absent without the destruction of its subject. It receives a twofold division, for one kind of it is separable, but the other inseparable. As in, to sleep is a separable accident, but to be black happens inseparably to a crow and an Ethiopian. We may possibly indeed conceive a white crow and an Ethiopian casting its color without destruction of the subject. So this distinction of separable and inseparable, separable is the type of accident that may or may not be the case at any given time, but it's still an accidental description of something. So sleeping, being asleep, that's an accident because you don't have to be asleep to still be who and what you are. And sometimes you might be asleep and sometimes you might not. Or to be cold or to be hot or something like that. These things change by time and circumstance, so they're separable. An inseparable accident is something that doesn't fluctuate. It doesn't change under ordinary circumstances, like your skin color. An Ethiopian or a crow is colored black. Other types of people are colored different ways. That's not something that changes. It's not variable but it's still an accident. If for some reason that person's color or that bird's color was changed, their nature would not change at all because all that changed was an accident, but that is an inseparable accident. They also define it thus. Accident is that which may be present and not present to the same thing. Also that which is neither genus nor difference nor species nor property yet is always inherent in a subject. Having discussed all that we proposed, I mean genus, species, difference, property, and accident, we must declare what things are common and what peculiar to them. Chapter 7 of Things Common and Peculiar to the Five Predicates Now it is common to them all to be predicated, as we have said, of many things, but genus is predicated of the species and individuals under it, and difference in like manner but species of the individuals under it, and property both of the species of which it is the property and of the individuals under that species. Again, accident is predicated both of species and individuals. So genus is said of the species and individuals under it. For animal is predicated of horse and ox being species, also of this particular horse and ox, which are individuals but irrational is predicated of horse and ox, and of particulars. Animal is the genus, so it can be predicated of horse and ox. The horse is an animal. Horse and ox are species, and this particular horse and ox are individuals, so you can predicate animal either way. Horses are animals, or this horse is an animal. Species, however, as man, is predicated of particulars alone, but property both of the species of which it is the property and of the individuals under that species, as risibility both of man and of particular men, but blackness of the species of crows and of particulars being an inseparable accident, and to be moved of man and horse being a separable accident. So he's still just delineating all the ways in which these things are applied in a categorical type of hierarchy. Species is predicated of particulars alone. So you would have to identify an individual. You would say this person is a man. So when you're assigning the species to something, you have to assign it to individuals. It doesn't make sense to assign it to anything above that because the only thing above that is species. It would be like saying humans are humans. So you have to pick a human and say, this is a human. But property both of the species of which is the property and of the individuals. So it is the property of the species of man to be able to laugh. And it's also the property of this guy over here, who is a man, to be able to laugh. But blackness of the species of crows and of particulars being an inseparable accident. These accidents are applied in the same way. Notwithstanding, it is preeminently predicated of individuals, but secondarily of those things which comprehend individuals. 
So it's preeminently predicated, meaning it's most properly assigned to an individual, especially when you're making some type of logical proposition. You're assigning particular categories of things which you're going to link together and make judgments about. So you would say something like, the man is moving. That is properly predicating that of the individual because you can point to something that has an objective truth factor. That man is moving. Well, he either is moving or he isn't. You can look and see. It can be said, but less properly and making less sense, that humans are moving because that's a very broad thing. You're applying that to the entire species. And it's true in the sense that if you think of the entire species as a group that is hypothetically doing something of which they are capable. But obviously, some humans are moving and some humans are not at any given time. So it's most preeminently or properly predicated of individuals. Chapter 8 of the Community and Distinction of Genus and Difference It is common to genus and difference to be comprehensive of species, for difference also comprehends species, though not all such as the genera. For rational, though, it does not comprehend irrational as animal does, yet it comprehends man and divinity, which are species. In fact, the difference, if it's a specific difference, is the thing which literally delineates that species as rationality in the case of man. Whatever things also are predicated of genus as genus are predicated of the species under it, and whatever are predicated of difference as difference will be also of the species formed from it. For animal being a genus, substance is predicated of it as of a genus, also animated and sensible, but these are predicated of all the species under animal as far as to individuals. As, moreover, rational is difference, the use of reason is predicated of it as of difference. Yet the use of reason will not be predicated of rational only, but also of the species under rational. So if you think back to that Porphyrian tree diagram, you can remember how each subset was a part, was included in the step above it. So individual is included in species, which is included in genus, which is included in the genus above that, all the way up to the category. So whatever you predicate of a genus as part of that genus, then it will be predicated of all the things under it because it includes all those things. If you say that animals are living beings with sensitive souls, that means that everything under them is that thing. All individuals in that species, including God and humans, those are all living souls. This too is common, that when genus or difference is subverted, the things under them are also subverted. For as when animal is not, horse is not, nor man, thus also when rational is not, there will be no animal which uses reason. So subverted, that means basically saying that something is not the case for this genus. And when you say that, that means just like when you affirm something of the genus, you affirm it of all of the species and individuals within and under that genus. Likewise, when you say something is not of this genus, then likewise everything under it does not have that property. Chapter 9 of the Properties of Genus and Difference Now it is the property of genus to be predicated of more things than difference, species, property, and accident are. For animal is predicated of man and horse, bird and snake, but quadruped of animals alone, which have four feet. Again, man of individuals alone, and capacity of neighing of horse alone, and of particulars. Likewise, accident of fewer things. Yet we must assume the differences by which the genus is divided, not those which complete, but which divide the essence of genus. So what he's saying there, that genus is predicated of more things than difference, Different species, property, and accident are subcategories, essentially, of the genus. So you can say animal about man and horse, bird and snake, but if you take a difference, like quadruped, well, that only refers to animals which have four feet. There's a lot of animals in that group that don't have that. And likewise, with something like the capacity to neigh or the capacity to laugh, 
that belongs to species within that genus and to particular subjects of that species. So it can be predicated of fewer things. Besides, genera are prior to the differences under them, wherefore they subvert them, but are not co-subverted with them. For animal being subverted, rational and irrational are co-subverted, but differences no longer co-subvert genus. For even if all of them should be subverted, yet we may form a conception of animated sensible substance, which is animal. So in other words, what he means here, when you subvert something, it's basically negating it. So genera are before the differences under them. And so when you negate or subvert the genera, then all the differences under them will also be negated. So if it's not an animal, therefore it's also not rational, not irrational, all these things which exist as species or difference within the genus animal, if it's not that genus, then all those things are also negated, but not necessarily the other way around. The differences no longer co-subvert genus. So you can say it's not rational, it's not irrational, but that doesn't mean it's not necessarily an animal. He's saying we can still form a conception of an animated sensible substance, which is animal, even if all of those differences by which we divide the things in the genus animal are negated. We can still have that idea of what an animal is. Yet more, genus is predicated in reference to what a thing is, but difference in reference to what kind of a thing it is, as was observed before. Besides, there is one genus according to every species. As of man, animal is the genus, but there are many differences, as rational, mortal, capable of intellect and science, by which he differs from other animals. Genus also is similar to matter, but difference to form. However, since there are other things common and peculiar to genus and difference, these will suffice. Chapter 10 of Community and Difference of Genus and Species Genus and species possess in common, as we have said, the being predicated of many things. But species must be taken as species only, and not as genus, if the same thing be both species and genus. Moreover, it is common to them both to be prior to what they are predicated of, and to be each a certain whole. So in other words, he's just pointing out that genus and species, they both have a very similar function and they work very similar. They're both predicated of many things. They both incorporate a great number of particular subjects within them, but it has to be distinguished when you're using them, which one you're using for what purpose. For the genus is the grouping for all the things under it, including the species, whereas the species is part of a genus. So it kind of refers back up. So all he's saying here is, these are both similar types of things, but some things are both a genus and a species, depending on which way you're looking. If you're looking down from genus at this category, then it's a species. But if you're looking up from the particulars to the species, then it's a genus. So it depends on which way you're looking up or down that porphyrian tree. So here's our key idea review of the five predicables. Every proposition has a subject and a predicate, typically linked by is, affirmation, or is not, negation, and these are divided into five basic kinds, the five predicables, which are genus, species, difference, property, and accident.